What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am super excited to bring you guys this two-part series on how I'm wiring the electronics on my Jumbo. If you're new to this build, this series is designed to give you the blow-by-blow, step-by-step process to convert your Jumbo to a bass boat. Don't forget guys, link in the description below to the full playlist for this conversion, as well as links to all the cool products and stuff I use to do this build. All right, without further delay guys, let's get into it. All right guys, before we get started, I wanna give you guys a quick overview of the electronic layout of this boat. I'm at the point in the project now where I have to run my electronics because after this, I'm gonna really start closing up everything. The decks, the rod locker, hatches, everything. So now is the time that I have to get these wires run. So that's what we're doing, guys. So powering my electronics will be three batteries. I'll have two batteries up here. I'm gonna run a 24 volt system going to my bow mount trolling motor. I have one battery here, one battery on the other side to balance out the weight. The third battery, which is already in place, is back here by the rear deck. This battery will be powering everything except the trolling motor. I'll have a six switch control panel, which is resting right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and for simplicity's sake of running wires and also, guys, it's best to keep this close to wherever your control panel is. This is a fuse box negative bus bar combo by Blue Sea Systems. Hopefully you guys can see which one this is. I'll leave a link in the description below for everything that I'm using in this build like I've been doing. The benefit of keeping these two guys together is that you will limit how much wires you need to run from end to end in your boat. I was considering putting my fuse box back here where the rear battery is because guess what? Your power from your battery will go into your fuse box before it goes into the control panel. So I was thinking initially, okay, mount this bad boy right here. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, guess what? Every lead that comes off of this, and right now this is slated for six different leads, you'd have six different wires running up to the front of your boat if that's where your control panel is. I know I want my control panel up here, I decided it'll be much better to have both the fuse box and your control panel in the same place. That way when you come off of here into here, it's very short, use a lot less wires, save a lot of money. So I'm really excited about this guys. I'll have lights back here. Wanted to rewind, give you guys the overview so you know exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. I can kind of see the finish line at this point. It is a long journey to do this. The first step, I've got eight gauge wire that I need to run from this battery up to where the control panel will be. So the best way to go about it and keep wires as hidden and clean as possible will be to go on the right side of the boat. That side has the rod locker. I have more opportunity to hide all wires behind the sidewall of the rod locker over there. We're gonna run it right through here, out the other side, behind the rod locker, and into the middle bench. So in order to do that, I've got this flexible conduit pipe right here. This is half inch thick. Pick this up from Lowe's. This is for outdoor use. We'll turn the curve on the outside of the boat. So hopefully that will help it to stick to the side of the boat as it goes through. It's got some WD-40. We'll put a little bit in here. There you go. There you go. All right, WD-40 seems to be helping. Put a little bit more. Not a whole lot, because I don't want that stuff back there. Let's try one more. Oh, it came through, guys. That's what we want to see right there. Commandeered a little help from my son. I was able to push it through from the back, get it behind the ribs on the side of the boat. The wire will fish through, come out here. It's going to go up here, behind here. I decided today to go ahead and mount the control panel right here. And I was really reluctant to do it because this is really a live well. Now I have no intention of using this as a live well. As you guys know, if you've watched the build so far, again, if you haven't watched the previous videos, click the link at the top of the screen right now for the full playlist and get caught up from start to this point right here. So I decided today for simplicity's sake to go ahead and mount this here. I'll of course, lose some space in the live well in the back, but I'm prepared for that. I'll probably create some type of protection from the back of the panel because I don't want things hitting the back of these uh, of the control panel. So all the wiring will be in this corner of this box. All right, guys, so it's a new day right now. 
apologies in advance for any wind interference if you're hearing wind in the camera sorry about that i'm at the point now where i want to install the led lights and how that's going to work is i am installing led lights right now it'll be two lights in each hatch so two lights there two in here and two in the big hatch here i might increase that as i go so moving up to the front of the boat where i have my bus bars uh, these are also by blue sea systems so i'll basically put one bus bar here underneath this will probably be the negative side i'll put another one on this side underneath here and what this will do is allow me to run all of my positive leads from my led lights to one central location and then run one lead off of here to the fuse box so this is a, a really great way to limit how many wires you use and it getting really crazy messy in here with a bunch of wires all over the place so that that'll help me contain wires and keep everything nice and neat and protect it all right guys i got everything laid out this is how it's going to go some tools you'll need to do this wire cutter i actually use both of these i'll show you why i have two of course you need your led light strips different terminal connectors I got this from harbor freight really cheap price and it gives you over 520 pieces so this is going to come handy throughout the entire build next we have some shrink tubing and what i really like about these is it does have sealant inside of this tube when you heat this up it expands the sealant and it comes out and makes a perfect seal around the wire so I really really like these and recommend these and you can see all the different sizes and then we've got all our wire connectors these are heat shrink soldering wraps so as you heat them up and I'll show you a demo the solder right here in the middle Put the two wires, one on each side, right into the center. Heat this up, the solder melts as this shrinks down. So it both shrink wraps it and solders it at the same time. So these are really cool. The wiring I'm going with is marine grade wiring. This is from Anchor Marine. This is all 14 gauge. Each spool is 100 feet. Got one for the negative, one for the positive, black and red. I've got some double-sided tape just to reinforce installing the LED lights. Now these LED lights do come with its own sticky backs to install but from what i've read on some of the reviews it's best to reinforce it with double-sided tape put that there of course we got liquid tape as well this is going to come in handy with this job making sure that connections are tight they're watertight of course we got some wire cutters gotta have the heat gun guys i've had this for a long time like over 20 years and uh it's really good to put it to use because i don't use this a lot this is by wagner there's tons of different brands out there so i also brought a little battery over here to test out each strip before i install it in a boat doesn't make sense to troubleshoot it in the boat why not get all the kinks worked out if any hopefully not before getting it all in the boat which would make it a lot harder to figure out later so let's talk about these led lights really quick i got these from amazon i believe they were like nine bucks for a pack of eight maybe they have different colors i went with white one thing that's a little bit sketchy on these leds are the wires that come with them i don't know if you guys can really tell but i don't know what gauge wire this is but it's very very slim maybe this is like 22 gauge wire i don't know really sketchy it's like i'm afraid to separate them like they'll fall apart but i know other people have used them the reviews have been really good i did do one already and get it all hooked up and this is what the end product will look like i've got my 14 gauge wire connected to the existing wire on each led strip got my connectors on them these, these connectors will connect Connect to either the fuse box or bus bar or the control panel so i won't take you to through every single wire that i do the connections for but i will at least at least uh, have you guys watch me put together one of these and after that it's just a repeat process so i got my gorilla tape on here double-sided tape just making sure it's on there good gonna head over to the boat peel off the back get this first strip installed that actually feels really good. Yeah, that's on there pretty good. So I'm gonna go through with you guys, step by step, how I do these LED strips. I'll only show you in real time the first one. So I have two wire strippers here. This one is, is a good one. I've never actually used one of these before, but I tried it last night and it works out really well once you calibrate it using this right here to the size wire you want. So I'm gonna use this primarily for this, I don't know, 22 gauge wire. I don't know what it is. So that makes it nice and easy to strip the wires. You guys probably cannot see <laughs> this wire is super, super thin. Just stripped off both ends of the wires, stripped off both ends on the LED strip. So hopefully you guys can see. Let me try to get a little closer. Insert both sides in, 
right to where the silver ring is, where the solder is, and the two wires will overlap each other inside there. And you just hold it right there and apply heat. And this will shrink down and also melt the solder. It looks pretty good. You can actually see the solder inside there. You guys probably won't be able to see this, but you can see the solder that's melted inside of here, right on both sides of this dark silver ring. You see it oozing out here and on this side. I'm gonna change up and use a, a ring terminal. So I'm gonna do that because the ring terminal will never come off once you screw it down into the bus bar. So you just wanna have it coming out just a little bit. So hopefully you guys can see that where the wire starts to come through. You just wanna back it up so that it's right there at the opening. Go ahead and crimp this down, give it a good tug. So we're gonna go ahead and shrink this down on here. All right, so got this shrunk down on there pretty good. This side is done. Let's get this side going. Pretty good. See if I can get you guys to see right here, you can see the sealant start oozing out. Very, very satisfied with these shrink tubings. All right, here we go. All right, we've got power, we've got light. All right, guys, this guy's ready to go in the boat. All right, guys, back at the work table. I've got 14 more of these to go. And don't worry, guys, I'm gonna time warp this section so it speeds right through it so you guys don't have to watch it in real time. All right, guys, we got most of the LED strips that I just prepped in the boat. And this is what it looks like. Hopefully you guys can see underneath there. It's only about 60 degrees outside, so hopefully it holds up when I'm out there fishing and it's 90 plus degrees outside. Uh, but time will tell, we'll see. But right now it's on there pretty secure. I try to peel it back off a little bit just to test it. And it is on there really well, guys. So that's what it looks like underneath. So you'll see it under here too and just different places around, okay? So same concept. This is one where, that I doubled up. I've got two light strips. And of course, I'll go ahead and clean all these loose wires up that's hanging down like this. So I just wanted to show you how I'm sticking the lights onto the framing. So I'm gonna just show you this one. Taking the Gorilla double-sided tape and just peeling off the back. Just start from one corner, put one end down. Just press it on. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because this is underneath the hatch. You won't see it, it'll be hidden. So in the end, this will be something like this. When I clean this up, all the wires will be hidden underneath as well, preferably behind the strip. So if you notice for this hatch, I do have a support beam right down the center and I don't wanna bring the wires over here, underneath, and all that kind of stuff. So plan A is to drill a hole right through the angled aluminum support beam and stick the wires through there so that everything just goes straight underneath here. And to do that, I'm gonna use this step drill right here. Uh, something else that I picked up from Harbor Freight. I'll leave it in the description below. And that way you can check it out for yourself. But once that's all done, all of these ends will go right into the bus bar. That'll be right here underneath. On this side will be the positive bus bar. That'll be the negative bus bar. And then I'm only running two wires that'll go to the fuse box and then ultimately the control panel. And that will light up everything in the front of this boat. All right, here you go, guys. Just have this assorted pack of grommets. Got this from Harbor Freight also. Pretty cheap stuff here, guys. But gets the job done. All right guys, so that's it. That came up pretty good. Just a little bit of wire going down. I couldn't get the hole any closer to the top because the drill 
wouldn't it's too big so that's as close to the top as I could get it. it came out pretty good so if you guys are faced with this same issue that's what you can do to solve it all right so now guys we're going to work on power management at the rear deck under the rear deck will be where the battery is that'll run all the accessories so it'll run everything except for the trolling motor so all of the hatch lights are primarily what it'll run and we'll also run this bilge pump right here. But to just give you kind of the layout and the plan for the rear deck, it'll go like this. We've got the battery here. From the battery, I'll run into this circuit breaker. This is a 50 amp circuit breaker, and that'll ultimately protect the power that's going into the control panel, all right? So from the battery, be this circuit breaker, I'm still figuring out where I wanna install it. I think I'm gonna end up installing it somewhere here. Um, this thing does recommend that it's six inches away from the battery. So from the circuit breaker, I'm gonna install this kill switch right here. That'll kill all power all at once to everything that's connected to this battery. So in case there's any kind of electrical emergency and God forbid anything worse, I can kill power with this switch right here. I'll probably put this switch somewhere right here that's the plan something like that i just need it out the way that i can still get my battery out this hatch so i'm going to try to tuck this away somewhere over here we'll see how it goes this is the main power cable this is an eight gauge wire marine grade this is from anchor marine i believe so my next step is going to be to conceal this wire and get it run from this corner all the way over to this this and then that. So my thought right now is to go ahead and drill out some holes here, right on these studs that are part of the framing, put a grommet in each one and run the wire through it. That'll keep this white wire elevated up here, right under here as close as possible. It won't be completely concealed. So it'll go through here, here, and over to this side, okay? So that wasn't too bad. Got the wire running all the way through each grommet underneath. It's pretty clean. From here, we're gonna go ahead and install this guy, get it hooked up. And I have to be really careful at this point because if I screw anything up, I don't have a lot of wire to play with because I'm gonna cut this about right here. So I've only got like maybe one, maybe only one chance to get the cuts right make sure I get the uh, terminal tips on them properly and get it hooked up. All right, guys, we're off to a great start. Stay tuned for part two coming soon, very soon, guys, where you'll get to see me finish this bad boy up and light this thing up. As always, we appreciate each and every one of you for watching and supporting this channel. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of this journey from start to finish, guys. We're almost done. And if you liked the video, leave us a thumbs up. We'll catch you next time.